Hi right, everyone, welcome to shelf 25. We're getting there. Still a few more to go, but uh, we'll get there eventually. So, I think I can see three unique games on this shelf because technically two of them are the same and we'll get onto those a bit later. So, this one we'll put over to the side for a moment and focus on this one. This is still Alderac AG. This is the last shelf for them. War Chess. Now, I haven't played this one as often as I would like because it is mainly a two-player abstract game, but you can play it 2v2 and it actually works quite well 2v2. But this is a really cool abstract. I mean, for starters, look at this box. This is a nice box with a flip magnetic lid and you've got these chips in here which look amazing, these poker chips. Uh, where's the um, bit to pull this out? Here we go. Pull that. You've got lots of these like Splendor style poker chips for each of the different units that you can have. So you can have all these different types of things on this map. And what you're doing in this is basically it's you know an abstract game like most others where, whoop, there you go. You've got this map on the board. Each of you, well, you, you and your opponent, let's say it's a two player, will use these units, but it's a bag builder. So you put the tokens in the bag, you draw them out three at a time, and then you decide whether you're gonna use them to uh, bolster a unit that's already on the board, or use it to, you know, I think mean, grab, use a special ability, or just to plonk it on the board so that you've got a unit. So as well as the tough decision of how are you gonna tactically use your pieces, there's also the idea of what are you gonna use the pieces for when you draw them out of the bag. Yeah, there's a luck element to it, but it's a bag builder. It's a fairly simple abstract bag builder. It's a cool concept, and I would deem it to be pretty innovative, actually, for what you know it's done. You know, a bag builder abstract game. Hmm, interesting. Definitely more interesting than some of the other bag builders that we've had in the recent times from <laughs> Orleans. But yeah, it's a cool one. Um, doesn't get a huge amount of buzz, I must admit, but I think you know, well produced, looks cool. Very neat, very cool rules. You know, it's it's a cool abstract. Check this one out, honestly, if you are into abstract two players. But it even works 2v2. And yes, it'll be a bit longer, a bit more involved, but 2v2 works. But you can't play it three player, solo, whatever. So it's two or four, take your pick. Ready. Automobiles, automobiles. They did a trilogy, uh, the plane trains and automobiles. Planes, nobody speaks of planes. It was boring, nobody cares, nobody wants it. Trains, it's popular, people like it. It's a deck builder, I like deck builders, but it's a deck builder about trains. You've picked the most boring theme ever to make it about, and I'm not a huge fan of the game itself because you play it a bit like Dominion, but you've then got that stupid, horrible looking hex map where you put this tiny little cube on this giant hex to represent your tracks. It just seems a little bit too abstracted even for a train game. So not the biggest fan of that one. I got friends who love it a bit though. So. Automobiles though is my pick of the free. This is a racing game. Right? Ooh, screaming out there from the kids. All right, let's see if I can turn this one up. Oh, that doesn't sound good inside. But you've got a racetrack with all these different cards that give you like the performance, the garage, like the gears, the tires, the suspension, you know, the parts for the car. You can upgrade these as the game goes on because it is essentially a bag builder. The cubes represent these different cards and so you can tailor your bag to focus more on performance, focus more on handling, that kind of thing. And you have a racetrack and you race your cars around, do a lap or two, and it's a race to the finish. But I love the way that the bag building is introduced in this because each game you can have a different set of cards. So there's different ways to play the game each time. The expansion in this allows you to do a campaign mode of multiple races, that's really cool, but just also gives you two extra tracks. One good for two player, one good for more player, you know, and so you've got a wide player scaling thing with this. But it's a different racing game. Again, I found this quite innovative, a bag builder racing game. Now, the artwork could have been better in it in terms of the board, but the board has to be shaded in different greys and blacks to represent the gears. So, you know, if you go on the outside of the track, you need to be in the highest gear, go at the biggest speed, you'll be slower on the inside, but it's easier to draw those cubes out. There's a, like, push and pull with it. But, yeah, I give this one credit. It's essentially like a, I think it's NASCAR specifically, no, it's that whole thing of just going round and round in a giant circle really, really fast. It's that style of racing, but... It's a good one, very entertaining, works well at the two to four player, well, two to five player, five my baby long. <laughs> so with two to three players, I think it's really, really good. Four player is pretty good, but you might want to take a lap off the time. 
Five player, I honestly probably wouldn't play this with five player, but if you do make it a single lap race, otherwise you'll be there for quite some time. But yeah, automobiles, very solid. Definitely my pick out of that trilogy. Now let's bring this back, because we only need it for this. <laughs> this is the same game in two different guises. This is my favorite deck builder of all time. The, no questions asked, you know. Dale and Merchants is really, really good, but this is my favorite. Valley of the Kings, and yeah, try and see the back of that. But Valley of the Kings, this is the last rights box. There was a base set and two expansions. You can get any of them, they're all good. I actually recommend getting the last rights one first though, because the starter cards in this one replace the old starter cards from the base set, and I think the new starter cards are miles better than the old ones. You know, every single one of them is useful. Whereas the old one, there's two of them that you kind of just entomb as quick as possible. But I love this game for, it's one of those ones where you've got multi-use cards again. So the card is used for its cost, as well as its ability, and also the chance to entomb it. So you've got three different things you can do with the card. But all the abilities are unique across all the different types of cards that there are. Uh, the sets, so they have different themes of what they tend to do. With the expansions, you've now got tons of them that you mix together to create your like game, so it's variety. This is all the expansions unsleeved in this box with barely any lifts. So this is a very portable game that you can take with you on holiday. Although don't expect to play it on an airplane uh, table tray because it'll be a bit too much of a table hog. But you know, still pretty portable. But the thing I love about this is the idea that the cards don't score for you in sets unless you get them in the tomb. If they're in your deck, they're not diddly squat. So as the game progresses with the pyramid deck running out, you have to as it snowballs, you kind of have to get into this thing of, right, do I entomb from the very beginning? Do I wait till the end? Do I have the means to entomb all these cool cards? Or have I kept them too long in my deck? How long before I decide, right, that ability was great, but you've got to go in the tomb, I need you for the points. It's a, just some really cool decisions that you make in this game, and I get a kick out of every time I play it. Which is why I had no problems in getting the premium version. This is the premium value of the King's version, and this one has a little bit more. Oh god, careful with the table there, but this one's got a little bit more on the back with terms of like the cards are now tarot size, so they're really cool. The artwork has been jumped up to 11, it's really good. You know, it's still easy to play. I mean, well, easy to play, you've got to be used to reading a lot of unique card abilities, that's the only thing. But the main thing this does, other than cosmetics, is you now have an additional solo mode um, with a bot. You have player powers, which are really cool, really worth using, and it has both expansions already built in. So this is like the deluxe full version of the set. Two problems it has. One, it's not portable anymore, <laughs> obviously. Uh, but it's got dividers, so it's easy to organize, so it is a really cool set. The minor problem, and this is a problem that other people pick up on, is the graphic design on the old one is really good. The way the cards hold in your hand, what the cost is, what everything else, is really clear as day to tell with the old set. With here, the way the graphic design has been done on the cards, it's still fine from my perspective. But some people have gathered that as you're holding the cards or as you're doing other things, you're kind of covering certain elements of the card that would be useful to have in clear view. It's a small graphic design anomaly uh, for the game. I'm, I legit, it's a legit flaw, but it's not a big enough flaw that it stops me wanting to play the premium version. I mean, on Tabletop Simulator, you can play both versions and it's great. Although I think if you play this version, you don't get the expansion cards. I might be wrong on that. But I, last time I played it, I only played the base set. But with this, play the premium. You can use every single card and every player power that's in the game. So really solid. Love this. This is a awesome deck builder. If you have not tried this game and you're a fan of deck builders, then renounce your fanship because you need to try this one out now. Ooh, there we go. Next one, only two games on it, so that should be pretty quick as well. And we're moving on to Awaken Realms. I don't own many of their games, just two, but you know, their stuff interests me from what they've done. And I've even kickstarted, uh, what was it? Um, Aether Fields and... Uh, the Great Wall. I've kickstarted both of those, so I look forward to getting those in the post, but two more for next time. So I'll see you then. Take care.